Okay, so today we have a little interesting one, just an aerial drop, straight aerial. We're coming about 60 meters over to this house over here. Um, we're going to get through some of these tall trees. The existing drops are going th through the tree and they're attached on the pole but I'm probably going to skip just back on the strand just to get through this clearing and then come across here and put a new nib up here and saddle down the wall. The attachment points are not up to code. The drops are way too close to power, which is an issue. Doesn't really give us a lot of room because the power is anchored right as the lines come in and then they're also going into the mast over there. We'll see what we can do. That's the MPT over there where we're starting. Have to deal with this weird mid-span intersection which I haven't been on before. We'll see how that's going to go, see if that supports my, my weight. I'll probably put my ladder up on this side. Should be interesting. And then we got power pretty much touching the, the strand right there. It's very sloppy all around this whole area. Okay, so I have all my pylons set up. I have the drop on coiled and tagged. I have my ladder up, pretty much ready to go. The path should be pretty quick. Again, this is gonna be quite interesting right up here, but we'll see how that turns out. Question is, am I on top of these or under? You're gonna have to see how the drop is gonna run. Looks like there's plenty of room for it to go under properly. Yep. Up over. So my assigned port for this one is port 7, which is this port. But port 6 is open. So I'm going to go into the next assigned. So sometimes I'll put the clamps first, sometimes I'll plug the drop in first so I don't have to hold it. This is a little odd. That's a tight bend. Looks like their cable ran short, which doesn't make sense because it's, they're supposed to start here. Yeah, this is, should have a nice loop. What a shame. So I'm just going to write port 6. arrow there so we can see that that points down away from the nap like that so I have to twist my cable there you go into the port there Make sure it goes in, kind of clicks in without much difficulty. You want to get that hand tight, but thread it all the way in. Because if not, the tech is going to have issues getting light level. And the open dust connectors, you want to connect them together. Great. Look at this drop here. It has a kink. 
Nice. Cut that. I'm going to start placing my clamps. There's not supposed to be zip ties on the strand. No one ever follows that rule. All of these clamps are facing up. These O clamps are directional, which a lot of people don't seem to understand. And also, when you're not using it to tension, they should, meaning as an anchor point like this, you always want them upright because it creates a path for new drops to feed through. If they're facing downwards, then it creates a lot more issues for the next tech who comes. And I'm usually the one that has to come and flip them upside down, or right side up rather. Okay, so now we have our waterfall, not as big as I'd like it to be, but it's matching the rest of them. Drop here, to transition over the pole, one clamp on each side, not including the waterfall clamp. Sometimes the nap is placed a lot closer, and then this would be the waterfall clamp. It's not ideal. Okay. Oh look, the bees are starting to come out. Fun. Now I need one more clamp to send the drop over and I will put it somewhere where these bees aren't going to attack me. Oh, here we go. This is why I like the winter. I would like to clamp it here. Let's see how that goes. I'm a little worried about the wasp right now. I didn't bring the spray up with me. Looks like they're awake in the winter. Okay, so we have our clamp. Now we can prep the drop without overreaching. I wanna try to work safe. Don't reach unless you need to. Put that on loosely. And then you can kind of gauge how much you need. There we go. And if you think you have too much slack, it's okay. Because as long as that's on good, this slack right here can move this way, right? You want to always have slack there, so this is okay. This is good. If the tech ever needs, or our next person ever needs some room here, some slack, they have it. It's a lot harder, but super tight. Okay. Just orient it there, so it's going to be easy on that side. We're pretty much done here. So hope you can see that all of these clamps are facing upright because they're all three of these are just guiding clamps no tension on them 
this is a tension clamp and the tension is in that direction you always want to have the opening of the clamp this being the opening towards me you want the opening towards the slack and the closed side obviously towards tension so that's your always the goal so if i was going in this direction with the drop then i would have this facing down so that the sorry i would have the the drop clamp facing down so that the opening was towards me this way and uh yeah that's that's how you do it that being said let's move over there and hopefully that can support me Alrighty, so we're back up. Gonna create some transition clamps. Always try to find some room between the wrapping so that I have room to slide the, the clamp if I need to. I'm gonna try to make sure the drop is as straight as possible, no twists. get under that so it helps to have this thing loose there we go so, tightness we're looking for great A little awkward with my ladder here, but let's see if we can't put some transitional clamps. You always want to watch yourself, especially on these rusty strands. There's wires. These almost just stabbed me. At least those aren't rusty. But, uh, okay. So, see how the cable's like twisting a bit? You just want to make sure you're not running it in a weird way. Keeping with its original bend. Okay. There we go. Transitioning nicely along. Creating no pinch points. Just need one more clamp which I should have in the back of my pouch here. Now this clamp is going to be upright. So this clamp was down because as you can see the slack is towards this side. The tension is that way. So you don't want the opening facing that way. The clamp can slip out. The, the witch clamp rather. Okay, ready for the next hanger. Or wedge clamp. Or just different kinds of clamps, I guess. There we go. Don't want to over tighten this as well. Give it some slack. You want to leave some slack here too because who knows, this might move, this might rip. And if you have it too tight, if this were to shift in a way we don't want, then it could pinch the cable. So this way. We have just enough. Doo, doo, doo. Looks good. Transition looks good. I'm really happy with that. Now we're just going to get over there. Just going to take some pictures and move on. Look at this. This is feeding off this ancient copper slick. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. 
and instead of running down the strand it's coming right across here oh boy so like i said at the beginning instead of going to the pole like these existing drops i'm going to come off the strand i think maybe just about here These other drops are ran really sloppy anyways. Okay. Hand tighten the clamp. Pull the slack up. Check for twist. I think it looks good. I'll hook myself up. So, you guys might not be able to see there. Maybe that's better. I'm just going to get on there. Then we're going to hand tighten. Not all the way. And then from here, we can tighten the clamp. I think I'm good there. Beauty. I'm just above it, but you have to realize that I'm also putting tension on the strand, so it should drop down a bit. Sorry, I'm just working with this copper line right behind me. Okay, now you can just move your ladder back over. Just in case wanting to slip, and then you're gonna do your loop. 180 there. I'm sure you can see that. Okay. And again, as you can see, the opening is away from the tension towards the slack. Get that clamp on there. Don't tighten it just yet. But the whole the size of the loop you want just make sure your fist can go through it that's about good you don't want too big too small you should go a little bigger than this but then you just want to make sure this doesn't get pinched in the clamp and yeah if we were going in this direction with the drop like this i would likely put another clamp facing upwards so the opening was this way and the drop clamp, the wedge, didn't have a chance of falling out. But we're going in this direction, so we're all good. And there we go. So that's the aerial portion hung on the strand. Now I'm going to get up to the house. I'm going to have to do a bit of a setup and figure out what I'm doing there. Going to get all my tools ready and uh, meet you over there. So now I gotta feed the cable through. I don't want to anchor anywhere near that because for one, it's all these weird ceramic stuff in the way. Um, I feel like the copper is out of use. I could cut it down. The customer's not home to confirm. They're using their coax service right now, I think. And um, the power is right there. Util power's anchored right there, so I can't anchor anywhere within a foot of there as well as powers right there, which blocks a foot from there. It's just not ideal. So I'm just gonna avoid it altogether. Anchor here, create a new path down the line with saddles. So then when this can get taken down, it'll all look nice and clean and just my line will be saddled down. So that's the plan. Okay, so I've passed over top of the coax line. I'm away from the power. Ram horn put up. Now I get to tension it. There we go. Nice and tight. Looks good there. I'm happy with that. Go ahead and do my drip loop. Okay. 
And same thing with the drip loop, you don't want it too big, too small. Might be a little on the bigger side. That's good. Just want to freely be able to put your fist through. Okay. Now I'm going to make holes down the wall to saddle the drop. Okay, we got the nib mounted, the drop saddled down. Stucco kind of weird wall is a pain to get through because it's like about half an inch of like, I don't know, plaster, concrete, and then behind that is wood after a gap. So I had issues where some of my screws weren't reaching the wood behind and then the, the anchors weren't grabbing because the concrete was too shallow. Just a bunch of stupid shit. But Anyways, we got the name mounted now. We use these like tornado screws that I really like. Um, down here, I couldn't get grip. So I ended up using two because the hammer drill um, drilled out the plastic that the screw would go into. So the screw just went right through and didn't hold. So I put two. Not ideal, obviously, but not something anyone's going to see. So we're just about ready to strip the drop, cut it down to size. And now here, wanna go slow when you're doing your loop. You wanna have a minimum of a six inch radius or a diameter rather, sorry, if it were a semicircle. So that looks pretty good there. It can go a little bit more. You don't want it too big. Risk it getting caught on stuff. It also doesn't look too good. I think that looks pretty good in uniform there. And just remember that the blades are in the middle of this stripper here. So if you put this here, then the cut should technically line up about there, which is always my goal. Some people will strip all the way down to like here, and then they realize that the cable, they have to pull it way up in order to get the stripped fiber up here and it ruins their loop. So just be mindful of that. If you get a good strip, you can do both at once. The goal is always to pull the string and one side of the strippings. Don't ever pull the drop itself because you can kink it. So you just want to slowly go like that and the drop should just fall out. As long as you're pulling the string if you're doing both at once, just go slow and steady. Not really something you want to rush. End up breaking the drop and then you screwed yourself. So see the string, I lost it there. Find it again. Can be a little finicky. Just be mindful of where you're leaving the strippings. You don't trip over it, you don't step on the drop. This is the one part where you have to start slowing down and be being a bit more careful. So here, and then I can double check my measurements. So want to be about there looks good make sure not to cut the drop here I like to do about four fingers you see that from the top of this over to here it's about four finger widths if you cut a bit too much it's fine you can cut it after but it's better to cut too much than too little Just gently pull it through get the string off of everything now you're going to feed through the nib or DMARC, nib meaning network interface box. They're also known as NIDs, which is a network interface device. But I think this is more of a box than a device. 
or a demark as in a demarcation box which a lot of electricians like to call it that I wasn't sure what a demark was until an electrician said it there we go so that's nice loop there uniform you don't want it too short too long that goes through there and again if you wanted some room to pull up you have it right I could technically pull it all the way up and it would still be a good loop maybe I'll do a little bit like that Oops, then get a little tight and you can come in with your cutters and just cut right there Make sure you toss that away there we go and then all I'm missing is one saddle here I like to put you could put it down here here if you can and you always just want to make sure that you tighten the saddle in a way that orientates with the curve of the drop you don't want to make it turn the opposite direction you can make it see there you want it always to go boom so I'm going to pull this up first and I'll put the next saddle ideally once you have this strip you want to be able to get it in the box so that you don't damage it I've gone pretty quick at this but you might want to take your time at the beginning the goal is to no, not have any tension on the drop at any point meaning here tension would be if I did this see how the drops start to coil up here gets too tight creates pinch points here 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 everywhere you always want to have it nice and loose and we leave this much slack um, one because it's protocol and two because the technician may need it protocol for them is for them to run a clear curve from here into the house whether through here or an existing entry point but sometimes techs will run this right into the house which is okay they can get away with it I guess not something I would do but they want to do it have some slack to do it or maybe they're just bad at splicing and they need all the slack once we get to this point you can either do velcro or ta uh, tape but ideally you want velcro we've got two pieces got these a little long and then main thing you want to be able to wrap off you just want to secure it so that the end of the drop does not get damaged in the door get pinched then being right there so and then just another one and it'll give the tech who does the install some pre-existing velcro to tidy things up with so there we go just going to install that last saddle write some info in and then i'll give you guys a last look at the job okay so we're pretty much done this drop well we are done i just wanted to give you guys a last look of what i did and point out a couple key issues that you might want to look out for and uh, make sure you comply with when running your own drops um, overall everything went really smooth um, that one part over there which i'll show you in a sec um, that 90 degree strand intersection um, was just something you have to be aware of and make sure that you position your ladder accordingly um, the main issue here was the power attachment Okay, so here's a look at the power attachment. You can see the power anchor right at the top there, and then where it enters over here. We want to stay a foot away from that at all times. Anchor point. Um, unfortunately, my drop had to run close to it, but uh, not by much. I avoided the coax and the old copper line and their anchor point, and I created my own just over here. So that's that there. And then I came down and finished into the box right here. So, everything looks good, nice and neat, as you always want it. Take pride in your work, and there you go. So that's that there. That's the key thing I wanted to point out, is the power anchor point up there. You always wanna avoid it, get away from there as much as possible, minimum 12 inches or one foot, and uh, you'll be safe. So just uh, in case anyone asked, the reason I decided to come across and not come down with these lines, for one, it's very congested down here, and none of these are strapped to the wall. So at some point, all of these old copper lines are going to get cut down, and then mine will be left nice and neat, and everything else can be removed. So if I were to anchor there, it would congest it even more and make it harder to remove down the line if they ever choose to reno. 
but uh, the main reason was avoiding the power. Came through the trees here, came off the mid-span just before the, the pole so that I would have a straight path, and then came across the strand. So this is the intersection point that I was talking about. I placed my ladder right here, and uh, obviously I would have been far out on the road and would have had to choose one angle or the other. And it was the safest this way because if anything were to collapse, the strand would still hold me up. But if that rusted line were to collapse, then all of that slack, I would just hit the floor. So just be mindful of these things. Try to think it through before you just uh, do anything. But um, there's the MPT where we started. We're at everything field side. I have four clamps there and I have four clamps here. One to create the waterfall, two to transition over the pole, and then a fourth to anchor off of. Might be able to see there. And then pretty much the same thing. One to anchor on this side, one to anchor on that side, and two tr to transition. And then just running nice and neat right along the strand. Not tighter, not looser, just enough. Okay, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate the support I've been getting. Subscribe and uh, leave a like and comment with any questions or anything you want to know, any type of video you want me to make, and I can see if I can facilitate it. So thanks again and have a good day.